following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. So we're going to take a look at some of these markets, starting out with the Treasury note chart. This is the weekly chart that we posted, oh, my goodness, every other day for the past three, four weeks. You can see we went right down into that 125 level in the notes, and, boy, we have had a gully washer to the upside, folks. They've really racked the old brains over there to see how they can get rid of the shorts. And they're certainly doing it. But I wanted to go through that in just a minute. I went through and looked at the open interest on these things. And the first one I looked at here uh, was, of course, the Treasury bonds. These only tre – oh, I've got to blow this up just a second, folks. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see it. And I want you to be able to see it easy enough. There we go. That'll be big enough. Here is the Treasury bond. You know, they have an open interest of about $1.1 million. Very, very small amount compared to the Treasury notes the two years, the five years, and the 10 years. And the main one that I went to look for, of course, up here was the 10-year uh, note because I want to explain the relationship between the 10 and the two-year because that's where the action is happening. You'll notice here in the Treasury notes, the 10-year notes, open interest dropped. It dropped in both of them, folks. That's a sign of short covering. Well, that could last a long time. And as you can see by what happened last night, I'll just give you a rough idea here. I'll pull up this chart here that I was following last night in the Treasury bonds because, gee whiz, I thought I had a really gully washer uh, in my favor here. Hold on one second here. I got to get it up here. And if I can only find it, I've got them all lined up just perfectly. And just when I think I want it, and just when I think I want it, it sneaks away. Here it is last night, folks. Let me get this up here. You'll be able to see it here. This is uh, where we were last night. You see the big gap up that we had yesterday? Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yesterday. And now we have this big move up. We went right up to 159.01. Uh, I actually sold it at 01, folks. And boy, was I a happy guy. I thought, gee whiz, this is going to be really a good one. Because what I was doing is I was watching it. Of course, when you're trading something like this, you've got to be really careful. So I just want to show you what happened. And I, <laughs> it's a little embarrassing because I, I didn't make anything on the – well, I made a very small amount. Anyway, look at this here on the four-minute. You can see the 159 made. It dropped from 159 all the way to $1,500, all the way down to ABCD to 157.29. Uh, now, I was thinking this was going to be a really good gully washer to the downside. And so I lowered my stop uh, quite a bit. I ended up making a, a little bit, you know, pocket change basically. But you can see that beautiful ABCD pattern that was there. And now we've gone up and we've made new highs above that. So there's a lot of people that scared money, folks. That's what bonds are. That's what peep happens during times uh, when markets are doing this uh, up and down. They go to the quality is what they think is in the bond market. And, and all you have to do is look at a bond chart and you can see that's anything but quality. So whenever this thing does turn down, it'll be a really nasty one, but no sign in sight with the fact that uh, we've got the troops uh, running through the streets of uh, Ukraine and Kiev. And um, by the way, you should say if you're Uranian, you call it uh, Ukrainian. <laughs> you're not Ukrainian. Ukrainian, you call it Kiev. And if you are Russian, you call it Kiev. So that's a big, uh, you have to know that. Uh, Tom Hugard and I were over there for four days for a foreign exchange uh, seminar, uh, oh my gosh, five, six years ago, had a really great time, met some wonderful people, and uh, it's a great country, except everybody smokes, even the little three-year-olds, I think, but maybe that's not the case. Speaking of Tom Hugard, folks, I, Tom sent me something, folks. He's giving a seminar, which I'm going to be attending in London on the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of April, and uh, he, uh, he, he put this out as the ultimate wingman. Folks, that would be the 
probably the number two or number three thing on my bucket list to work with him uh, each day because I've had the, uh, the, the honor of working with him. And, uh, gee, it's, it's really it's to get inside his mindset is, is really quite spectacular. However, instead of paying $1,300 for something like that that's going to be in April, we're going to be doing one in March. Uh, here at TFNN, probably on March 16th or 17th, I'm working it out now with uh, Tommy O'Brien to get it set up uh, in the new in the new platform that they're going to be using. So that'll be be fun to look at. But that one will only cost uh, about a, what about 20 percent of that? Only be like 295 for five hours of live trading. We've done these and they've done well in the past. We've made uh, have four of them and all four of them have made money. But this time with the volatility we're having, we should have some really good you know, rocking and rolling. Folks, last night where you were sleeping, something really important happened in relationship to what we've been looking at. I wanted to show you the high last night in the E-mini S&P, the 61% retracement of the high that we made back on February the 12th came in at 4400. The high was 4399 and three quarters. It missed it by one quarter of a point. And of course, we backed all the way off to, uh, I think, 3320 or something, whatever it was uh, today earlier. But uh, that hit, did hit that 61% retracement. Uh, people have asked me to comment about the politics, folks. Don't know enough about it. To, to the, the little poem that I gave you from Martin Armstrong yesterday, The Atheist and Little Girl, pretty much describes it. And uh, that's uh, basically the bottom line. I mean, I, I look at the charts, folks, and that's really all I'm looking at. I, I really don't do any more than that. I keep it as absolutely as simple as possible. By the way, our guest today is going to be popping in at the half hour. Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. He always has some great stuff. One of the best technicians and certainly one of the best Elliott technicians that I've had the privilege of knowing. So he'll be coming on uh, at the half hour break. Now let's switch over here for a moment here and let's just talk a little bit about Bitcoin because it was up 15% yesterday. And uh, the news on that, of course, and you're going to hear more about this. You might even hear it in the presidential speech tonight. And that is, you know, you're, you're, you can see the ABCD that's forming at the 382. That's at 47,000, folks. That's a perfect ABCD at 47,000. Now, we might get there. We're at 44 and change right now. And, of course, this is two days old. We had a 15% move. But that is a beautiful ABCD. And, you, and that, that is as perfect as it gets. So pay attention to that one. Now, the one thing that you're probably going to hear is they're going to the United States is going to ban Bitcoin and people that are doing business with the Russian. The problem is, folks, 16 percent of all the, Brit, the uh, Bitcoins out there are owned by Russian people, not not just I'm not talking about the oligarchs and stuff. I mean, just the regular. And they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people that produce it over there because the weather's nice and cool and they got lots of energy. The problem is all of the Russian stuff is is. Uh, is held on the site called Binance, okay? The Binance site for cryptocurrencies is larger than Chicago Mercantile and Chicago Board of Trade combined. That's how big that site is. So that they're not going to have anything to do with that. If they ban the Russians, that's not going to affect Binance because that's not in the United States. You know, the other ones, Kraken and uh, Coinbase and all those are here. That'll be affected, of course, but not the others worldwide. So these, when you see these sanctions... They just don't work very well. Let's get right back when we come back from our next break here. 877-927-6648. we got to talk about the grains, too. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, before we get to the wheat, I posted a chart of the yield curve, the 10-year versus the two-year. As you can see here, the 10-year is getting massacred versus the two-year. That little red arrow there is where it all started. That was the 382 retracement in that yield, and boom, we're almost down to zero, folks. And we get there, that's recession. So we're not very far from, from that level, and the way it's dropping, uh, it doesn't seem like anyone wants to catch this fall, falling safe. Hold on here. I think we got someone calling in today. Let's just double check here. We've got Mr. Z on the line. John, how are you doing today? Good morning, Larry. Thanks for taking the call. Thank you, John. What can I do for you, buddy? Larry, I'm monitoring financial stocks. I noticed JPM, JP Morgan stock is uh, really selling off hard, breaking swing lows. Clearly a, uh, a bearish pattern, lower highs, lower lows. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, we've got uh, financial stress here with uh, the Ukraine mess. Uh, any, are you picking up anything? Uh, does this portend anything in particular for the S&P and the E-mini futures in your judgment? Well, uh, as you know, I have a negative bias towards that, and uh, it does look like once we go below that 4,200, the next stop will be 3,800 and then possibly lower than that. But that yield curve is telling you that rates are – they're not going to be able to raise rates this time, John, because the, the, the economy is in such bad shape just by interest rates. You know, I know they're having this big rally going on right now, but when that rally's over – uh, you know, there's going to be a vacuum under that market because, you know, buying bonds for insurance policy is like taking gasoline to a fire, hoping you can pull it out. So I don't, yeah, uh, I don't that, see Larry. any any particular uh, thoughts, uh, comments on the uh, the selling in J.P. Morgan stock that you care to No, share? I don't. Uh, no, I don't know anything about that, John. I'm actually the last person. They'll call you before they call me on what's going on there. But that's telling you that somebody knows something. And uh, especially when you have that much of a downbreak, 
uh, is, and when the market started higher, actually, and then that that started lower, somebody knows something. They're they're liquidating. They they either have an exposure, possibly in one of the futures, like a silver SLV or something like that. That could be it. I I don't know. I'm just surmising it might be something like that because it is yeah, substantial. You know, Larry, and, and you have I, to I pay concur on that. Of course, I don't know. I'm not going to get the call. But with uh, the price pressure, the lack of buying and the aggressive selling in the J.P. Morgan equity itself, mm -hmm. that tells you there's some big players who've said, God, we, uh, you know, something's going on and it just ain't good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some key players might have moved accounts around or they might have made a, they might have made some trading mistakes, too. They might have lost three or four billion dollars in a trading mistake, you know, given the stuff that's going on here and the way the news changes every 30 seconds. Anytime they hear a tank moving in Ukraine, you know, things will move 20 or 30 handles in the S&P without any trouble anymore. So that could be it. But, you know, we'll know the answer down the road here about a month or two. But, you know, just watch the price action and that'll tell you whether you're going to be able to uh, withstand all this selling. But this is substantial and a little bit lower here in the Dow, down about another five, six hundred points. Uh, we're going to be looking at blue sky uh, below and that that's going to be uh, uh, probably pretty significant. So we need to watch that level at thirty three hundred. You know, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we're trading about a couple hundred points above that right now, but that can that can evaporate very quickly. Larry, thanks so much on that. I, I'm just going to ask a favor of you. This is kind of a favor to be active the next days or so. Uh, with, uh, of course, it's wheat of all the uh, the agricultural commodities. It's mm -hmm. the wheat market that is uh, pacing the rally. And we've gone limit up on, uh, I'm looking at the Kansas City wheat, uh, I can't mm -hmm. tell you what the Chicago wheat's doing, but um, uh, I'd, be, I'd be much obliged uh, if you would be uh, daily showing the daily charts or weekly charts as you see it uh, to identify potential rally completion targets so that we can be prepared for an inevitable uh, spike high in reversal. Of course, I don't know where it's going to come. I'm sure I won't catch it, but I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd be much obliged to see what you're thinking and what you're seeing in your chart work. So, uh, so thanks again, Larry. Sure. We'll look forward to uh, hearing Jeff Huge. Okay. Uh, Mr. Z, I posted the chart for May wheat. You can see it's limit up at uh, 984. It's above the 61.618 expansion. It would have to come off at limit for me to even begin to think of whether I wanted to sell it or not, and it's been locked there for quite some time. I'll cover the beans uh, when we come back for the break here. We have some more time with uh, after Jeff is on today, but I believe we have Matthew on the line right now. Matthew, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How you doing? I'm very good. What can I do for you? Uh, well, first I want to say thank you for all the help and everything, you know, for doing what you do. Um, but my question is, as far as intraday trading, when it comes to these A, B, C, D patterns and, um, you know, the harmonic patterns and everything, are you entering right at the completion of these patterns? or are you I sure am. Point D. I'm looking at point D where A, B equals C, D. Uh, that's some right out of Benoit Mandelbrot. And that's what I'm looking at. Now, the only the only time I don't do that, and I talked about this with Jeff yesterday from, from Philly, and is if there's a gap. Well, there's a gap in the gold chart, but it doesn't affect the order that I have working in gold today because that gap happened three or four days ago, and that gap has been filled. So as long as there's not an open gap out there, I'm going to do it. And also, if the, the, the ranges are really wide, like a 30 or $40 range in, in gold would be very wide for me, then I will not do that trade at point D. Other than that, I'm going to do it all day long because I know the odds are in my favor of winning. Okay. Okay. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to have uh, Jeff Huge coming up at our break here in a couple of minutes. I wanted to cover a couple others uh, of these that we're watching here uh, this morning. I wanted to show you the bean market. Now, here's a perfect example of one of the things that you want to do. Now, we have, we have corn up substantially, wheat up the limit, but look at beans. Beans were only setting at the 61% retracement there at 1692. So it was totally 
uh, apparent here that we have a beautiful 61% retracement. It's weaker than wheat. It's weaker than corn. And you know what your risk is. And it's not trading anywhere near limit up. So that was the one to sell. And what happened? It dropped 25 cents. Now, it's come back pretty good. It's only up. A, uh, it's a. Uh, only down a nickel from where well, I think it's trading at 1685 uh, down, 85 cents now. But at one time, it was down 25 cents. So that's a perfect example of you always want to sell the weakest and buy the strongest. Those are the ones that you want to do. And another perfect example of that, and we talked about it just a few minutes ago, if you want to buy the strongest, look what happened here in the Treasury bonds. You have a beautiful ABCD there in Treasury bonds down there, 157.20 low. And the low was 157.18, and he rallies $1,500 with virtually no heat at all. So you want to buy the strongest, sell the weakest. That's what they say in the book by Jesse Livermore, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. And that's what we should do. What we do and what we say sometimes, it can be totally different, but that's what you're supposed to do. And in the heat of battle, sometimes it's really hard to tell the two apart. But the best thing is these patterns help you control risk, and that's the main thing. Now, let's take a quick look here at the corn. We'll cover some more of this after we've, after we've heard from Jeff. We'll be right back with Jeff Huge, folks. Alpha Insights. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, please. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger Sten Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger Sten is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Okay, folks, we're back, and we have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights on the line today. He was kind enough to join us during this busy time of the day. Jeff, I uh, have a couple of questions from our listeners, and one of the things that we have a really great affinity for here is risk control, and we really like your 80-20 risk parameters that you're looking at. Could you tell the folks what that means and how you handle that? Sure, Larry, and first let me thank you for having me on the show. Um, you know, what we really like to do is take a look at uh, risk relative to other assets. And the best way to do that, in our view, is to look at stocks versus bonds. We use a, a fairly large universe of stocks, the S&P 1500, which encompasses all market caps, large, uh, mid, and small caps. And we compare it to corporate bonds rather than treasuries because, you know, with treasuries, we really don't have um, – it's a pure um, – uh, manipulated market by the Fed. So we don't have a market that, that uh, got price discovery in it to the same extent as we do in the corporate mm -hmm. bond market. So, you know, we've, we've become very comfortable with this ratio. It's been back tested 30 years uh, before we went to a live uh, use back in uh, 2003. And so for around the last 18 years or so, we've been using this model to get us in and out of the stock market on a timely basis. And, you know, what's interesting is that it made a new all-time high on February 28th. We use month-end data. And that tells us that the risks are really skewed toward the bond market at this point, not the stock market. And that, mm -hmm. in fact, U.S. equity markets might prove to be a safe haven as global <laughs> capital seeks more liquid uh, markets with, with greater um, confidence. And so... Uh, the U.S. equity markets, by default, might absorb a lot of capital that's coming out of uh, other markets, for example, Russia. Um, and so, you know, by default, you know, the best market might prove to be a relative safe haven. Mm -hmm. Well, when you see a straight-up move from 52 to 159 in bonds in just two days, you know that somebody's absolutely scared to death. That's uh, You don't see that very often. That's... Uh, that, that's really big money. And not only that, I noticed the open interest was dropping, so that's short covering. So you're correct. When that's over, there will be a big vacuum out there, and we'll see what happens. Now, we have another question from one of our listeners in Hawaii, believe it or not, and he's asking a question. The last time you were on, you talked about your Elliott Wave uh, counts. And so could you give uh, the folks here, I put your chart up of the Elliott Wave analysis that you had your preferred count and then also your alternative count. Do you want to tell the folks what you're looking at right now in the markets? Sure, of course. So uh, it was interesting because we were on in the morning on the 24th, which was the day that the S&P put in its most recent low. And mm -hmm. um, in the morning, it looked like a complete washout collapse. And by midday, we saw some stabilization toward uh, the early afternoon. We saw massive capital uh, coming into the market, and we ended up closing up on the day and uh, recovering completely from that, that washout low. And so uh, the follow-through the next day was also interesting because it brought us right back into kind of that neutral range that we had been uh, seeking. It closed above the 4278 level which is what we've kind of drawn the line in the sand and said, if we have a, a sustained break of 42.78 on the S&P 500, then that would confirm a new bear market. We just haven't seen that. And so, you know, the way I'm looking at things right now is that the preferred count has to call in that most recent low, the February 24th low, as the end of a fourth wave correction. And we've outlined this in, in kind of gory detail, and you can find it on uh, my Twitter feed, uh, exactly how we get there at the um, five-minute interval on the chart. And so, you know, we've, we've basically uh, marked every single wave and concluded that we've put in a double irregular flat corrective waveform to mark wave four of um, intermediate wave five, or I should say primary wave five. And so now we are embarking upon intermediate wave five of primary wave five, of cycle wave five and probably super one cycle wave three. And the question is how far can it go at this point? And based on our work, we believe a breakout to new all time highs would confirm it. And that would project a target to around 5,500 on the S&P 500. Conversely, a sustained break below that 4,278 level would bring our alternate count to the four. And that would suggest that the lows on February 21st were actually 
uh, wave one of wave A, of large wave A, of counter trend wave four to the downside. And that's going to be a fairly deep correction when it eventually completes probably years from now. And it should take us down to a minimum of 2200 on the S&P 500 when it finally mm-hmm. terminates and possibly much lower. Um, mm-hmm. So at this point, we would say the next potential downside target would be about 3800 on the S&P 500, but only if we get a sustained break of 4278 mm-hmm. And that means a weekly close below that level. Okay, that makes good sense. Now you have another chart up here uh, when you're talking about the the cyclicals, uh, the fact that they're looking uh, actually pretty strong compared to other parts of the market. Now, uh, can you tell the folks how you define that and how you use it? Which chart uh, page are you looking at? This was a large cap. Your your large cap index is, is still very bullish, and that's the one I was on page number 10, page 10. Yeah, yeah. So, so page 10 is really just looking at the S&P 500 from, and we're using a 13-year, a Fibonacci 13-year monthly chart. And what we have is a very strong structural trend uh, marking the 2009 low and the 2020 low. And then we're using a 13-month or 55-week uh, simple moving average in red to kind of define the primary trend. And we're using an, an eight-month exponential moving average to give us a signal. And if the eight month were to cross below the 13 month and hold on a closing basis, that would signal a trend change uh, and would probably move us to the bearish side of the market. What we're looking at right now is a break uh, or or actually a a close above that 13 month uh, simple moving average and chart support, which again, we've marked as 4278. Uh, which is the monthly close that we saw back in October. So if we were to close below those October lows uh, in any sort of sustained way, and we were to get you know a breakdown uh, confirmed by a signal of the eight crossing below the 13-month moving averages, that would move us quickly to a neutral position in uh, large cap equities and probably contemplating a downgrade to bearish. And you know our our opinions are really. Neutral means we're out of the market, okay? Bearish would mean that we're considering shorting it. And it's just not time to short this market yet, uh, in our opinion. Now, um, we have seen a downtick in momentum. Momentum has turned negative, and that's concerning. There's a big negative divergence up there. And, uh, you know, relative strength of uh, large caps actually ticked down last month uh, versus uh, small and mid caps. And so, you know, the thing that's interesting about that Um, condition is that small and mid caps are catching a bid. They both closed positively last month. And so the big uh, knock on the market is that there's been a big breath, a negative breath divergence, right? And um, small and mid caps haven't been participating, but we're seeing money roll back into small and mid caps at this point. And that suggests that the selling may have uh, reached a climax. Hey, Jeff, thanks for joining us, my friend. I'll post your details so folks can reach you on your Twitter and your email. But thanks for joining us, buddy. We really appreciate it. Great, great analysis, by the way. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Jeff Hughes, Alpha Insights, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Peter from Park City, Utah, on the line. Pedro, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, still living the dream on the green side of the grass. What can I do for you? I just wanted your thoughts. Um, so if I go back in history and I look at the, the long-term uh, capital management collapse of 98, if I remember correctly, it was stemmed from – a currency crisis that occurred, oh, in the ruble, um, that set off the basically the downturn and subsequent bail, bailout of of it. And I um, just want your thoughts on, like, it, you know, with the ruble moving like it has, is there something systemically going to happen in, you know, some of these funds that are over leveraged, leveraged to emerging markets? Uh, the world or U.S. or whatever decide to take Russia out of, say, the emerging markets, uh, you know, mm -hmm. ETFs. I'm just, uh, I'm just throwing it out there because, you know, mm -hmm. could something actually be underlining like a true like crisis? Well, you we usually know after the fact, but here you're right. There are so many things out there that we've talked about here at TFNN over the past months. You know, the GDP is you want 130% of normal. We've never seen uh, you know this many uh, IPOs and all the money that's flown in equals everything that's happened over the last 10 years. All that stuff is out there. But regarding long-term capital management, you remember they had those Nobel Prize economic economists there, but they failed to forget to factor in liquidity. It was wasn't the Russian uh, ruble that caused the problem. It was the lack of liquidity. They couldn't move their positions. And then when the market started to tighten up and volatility increased, then they couldn't get out. And that's what caused the demise of it. And of course, the Fed had to come in through the help of Mr. Greenspan and his buddies, and they bailed John Merriweather out. And what was really ironic about that, the following year, guess what? People gave him another $3 billion to start another fund. And the same thing happened with that one, too. So you just got to be careful because uh, it's uh, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. And they were they just got lopsided. They just literally couldn't get out of their positions and they couldn't. And not only that, but they couldn't hedge them because there was nowhere to take the other side of the market from what I understood. Now, OK, so I'm glad you clarified it was not technically the ruble. So here's the question. Then are there people stuck in the exact same position currently that can't get out and, you know, are on the wrong side, you know, of whether it's currency, et cetera. 
Yes, they are, uh, Peter. But the problem is, if I told you, buddy, I'd have to kill you. You know, <laughs> I love it. Jeff, uh, Peter, I, you, you might be the second to the last person that they call. I'm the last person that they call mm -hmm. to give me any inside information. All I do is I try to watch, you know, what's happening with prices. Like we're seeing this monster move in bonds and starting maybe in stocks today. I don't know. But, uh, you know, that's all I'm looking at. I keep it as simple as possible. I don't get it. You know, I've been doing this 60 years, Peter. I think I've gotten two inside call, inside information things that actually worked. One worked for about a dollar and a half and the other one broke even. So I, I never get inside info, information. I run away from that like the plague because I've never seen one that actually worked. But you're correct. There's something out there. I mean, we, we don't know whether it is. It could be anything that maybe be a total surprise. It might even be the Fed has made a bad mistake and they're, they're trapped into something. You know, that, that's also possible because they put all this money into helicopter bend stuff. And uh, if they turn around and they say, OK, how are we going to get out of this? And uh oh, that, that could be it. I don't know. You know, you, you, somebody no, no, could no make idea. It. that's why I'm asking you, of course. Yeah, well, that, well, I. <laughs> Like I said, Peter, I'll have to ask you because I don't know. <laughs> if I, if oh, well, I told okay. you, we'll, we'll I, I think we'll it's out there, Ron, but I don't, I don't know what it is. I really don't. <laughs> All righty. Hey, I appreciate it. I just say it was uh, fun talking yeah. to you and, and just, you know. Well, we'll I'm glad to hear from you, but I appreciate talking to you. I love Park City up there, and I, uh, I think it's a really great place to live, and I know you're living the dream. So call in when you get a chance, okay? <laughs> no, absolutely. Will do. Thanks, Larry. Okay. Well, Peter from Park City poses some great ideas there, folks. The problem is uh, you don't know until you know, and then by then everybody else knows either. All I do is I look at the charts and I see things and I say, okay, if I buy here, I know I'm going to be able to risk this much. If I sell here, I know I can only risk that much, and that's what I try to do. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. The ABCD, it works. Does it work all the time? No, but it works two out of three times. But the good part of it is it tells you when you're wrong. And the second good part is when you're right, it's going to pay you three to one or more, sometimes even a lot more than that. So those are the main things that I focus on as I'm looking at these uh, these charts. And we're having some, you know, some pretty good moves here. Well, we got the Dow down well over well, six, seven hundred points now in the S&P's. Uh, looks like I just saw from the TVs down there around 4,300. Remember, we're a long way from that low down there, folks. That was around 4,220 uh, back on the 24th. So that uh, we're not too far away from it. So that's a, a real interesting to look at. So we'll be able to see this. Uh, uh, we'll see what's going on. Um, by the way, tomorrow we're going to have Shane Smolian as our guest. He's got some really, you know, he's been very bearish and he's been very right. So being very bearish and very right, we'd like to have him on to get his idea of what he's looking at right now in, in these markets because he's had these uh, pretty much spot on. And I, I think it's important that we have him on to, uh, you know, to get him uh, uh, to get his opinion because he's certainly been uh, pretty much spot on. OK, now. Uh, we've covered the grains. Uh, we've covered the crude oil. By the way, I just was informed that uh, crude oil hit a buck sixty, a dollar six, uh, a buck sixty. Whoa, that'd be a little high, a dollar six. So we haven't been this high since 2014. We're only uh, see the old high was 144 back in uh, when Goldman Sachs was looking for $200 uh, crude oil back in 07, and it went from 144 down to 30 in just a little more than a year and a half. So remember, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you don't lose. And that's what our goal here is to pretend that we actually know a little bit more than we do, but we do know one thing, and that is risk control. And that's what we're doing here at TFNN is monitoring the risk. It's how much money you don't lose, not how much money you make, because you're gonna stumble into some good winners, folks. You know, we've been uh, we talked about that three eight, excuse me, the 61 percent retracement. I posted this last night early as it was actually happening. I happened to be uh, right uh, right around ooh, 7 38 o'clock, uh, 9 30 uh, New York time. And I posted it up there to say, oh, we he just hit the 61 percent retracement there. And folks, we hit forty three. 99 and a quarter and it dropped 20 points faster than Hector could move that dog out of the pen and boy that dog moves pretty fast and it just kept dropping now we're a hundred handles lower folks in just a matter of a few hours so that's a big thing the other thing is the I don't know if the Russian stock market has opened or not uh, 
I doubt whether it did or not because it was in, it's in pretty precarious situation because the currency is going crazy. Now, remember, uh, Peter mentioned that the Russia is a, an emerging market, but I, I frankly don't know anyone that trades the Russian ruble. You know, it's dropped 110 percent versus the U.S. dollar in just these last few days. Now, if you're on the right side of that, that's pretty good. I've never traded the ruble, nor do any of my friends that I know have traded the ruble. I'm sure, you know, there are people that do. Hey, we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Target First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Okay, folks, uh, I just thought I'd let you know, I, po I posted a chart of wheat again, I believe. Uh, let's just do it again because I want you to know that it has not traded uh, since it closed uh, early, early this morning, limit up. Uh, we're still trading up there at that 984 level, has not traded at all. That means there's more buyers than sellers, so that when it does lighten up, it most probably will be going, uh, it'll be going up a little higher yet. Uh, so that's mainly what we're watching. The bond, the treasury, excuse me, the soybeans have not made new highs of this run, but they've give, they've brought back, uh, they dropped 25 cents and they've taken most of that back. So they're up near the, up near the highs again. And I understand the stock market's uh, down about 600 points in the Dow and the S&P's broken below 
uh, or came very close to that 4,300 uh, move to the downside. Uh, remember, folks, tomorrow we're going to have Shane Smolian as our guest, always entertaining, and he's certainly been spot on. The market will have him with some interesting questions, and that'll always be a good show. Uh, Thursday, I'm hoping to have uh, Mr. Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly, and I've been trying to get Joe DiNapoli on four Fridays in a row. This is my last chance to get him on. Otherwise, I'm going to have to say, Joe, you're going to have to stick with Jimmy Fallon because we're just not going to be able to uh, get you on top here. Now, I wanted to talk to you just a tiny bit here about the uh, natural gas because, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on talking about natural gas in Europe. It sells for three t or four times what we sell for it here. And believe me, folks, most of that natural gas comes out of uh, uh, Russia and if Mr. Putin, you know, goes to sanctions and he turns off the gas, uh, the gas spigots in France, it's not France, but in, in Germany and the Baltic Sea, Baltic states, that's not going to be good. Uh, that, you, don't, you don't need that kind of stuff. Hopefully we're going to get through this all right. Uh, it's not going to be easy and it's probably going to be long and drawn out. They don't have all those trucks in there and all those men in there to uh, pass out sandwiches. We know that. For a fact. So the main thing is we got to keep our eye on these treasury bonds and treasury notes because when this market turns, uh, it's going to go down into new low ground very, very quickly because the Fed's in the, between a rock and a hard place. And that might be the unknown that Peter from Paul, uh, Park City was talking about. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And we'll see you with Shane Smolian as our guest tomorrow. Sayonara, folks.